You are tuned in to Making a Difference with Melissa Billy Clark. This show shares compelling stories and experiences of well-known faces and everyday people who change the world in big and small ways. Get ready to open your mind and your heart with Melissa Billy Clark. Thank you for joining us on Making a Difference. I'm your host, Melissa Billy Clark. We speak with Dr. Norman Sheely. Dr. Sheely is the founder of Sheely Soren Wellness Institute, being one of the first physicians to specialize in the resolution of chronic pain. He is the author to countless books and has treated over 30,000 patients in his career. He is Patient Preferred Physician of the Year. Dr. Shealy, I'm so excited to have you on Making a Difference and so honored to have you on. How are you today, sir? I'm excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. I loved researching you because we share the same beliefs about the divine spirits and we get we get into that. But first, you've helped so many people holistically. What has made you so successful in the way of holistic medicine? Well, I think it's treating people with respect mm. and not offering drugs. I personally know no illness for which I would take a drug at this point. And I think nobody should take a drug long term. Three months at the most in acute situations and you ought to be weaned every drug has complications within three months or less. Mm. And you have a nickname for the pharmacy and it's called the mafia. <laughs> I like that. I think the, the, the pharmaceutical company is as evil as the mafia, more so because it doesn't deal with money, it deals with health. Right, right. And so many prescriptions can cause us long-term effects. So my question to you is, what if uh, the diagnosis that you have is genetic and you are being told by your physician that you need to take medicine in order to stabilize what's happening? What do we do in that case? So let's just talk about cholesterol for that. I matter. tell them your physician is stupid and you may quote me. <laughs> so what do we do if we're told that we have high cholesterol? What do we do at that time? Okay, try methylglycine. Try methylglycine, 1,000 milligrams three times a day, and lecithin granules, two tablespoons a day, will control it safely and infinitely better than statin drugs. Mm, interesting. And let's discuss uh, chronic fatigue. Um, what food should we avoid? Well. I would avoid all drugs that have steroids in them, cortisone type drugs. Mm -hmm. And I would avoid any stimulant drugs. Stimulant, all mood drugs, I, I think the th kind of thing I could say is suck. Mood drugs. I have a gadget. In fact, I'm sitting on it. I'll show you. This device mm -hmm. is better than all the psychiatrists, all the psychologists, and all the mood drugs in the world for controlling stress, anxiety, and depression. That's your PEMF, right? Yes. That's the therapy. It's called PEMF. And tell us about that and how it helps us. I have got a number of inventions in the electrical field. My first one was 10 for transcranial electrical nerve stimulation and spinal cord stimulation, still used all over the world, and then cranial stimulation. But my favorite is this. I had the idea some years ago that the body has energy centers. They're called chakras. The first chakra is the legs. The second one is the sacrum. The third is called the solar plexus. The fourth is the heart. The fifth is the throat, the world center. 
the six is basically your brain mm -hmm. and the crown chakra is the top of the head and they resonate with the frequency of the earth the earth itself has a resonance frequency of 7.8 hertz or cycles mm -hmm. the first chakra resonates with that plus or minus two so each of the seven chakras adds 7.8 plus or minus two if you have a problem anywhere in body putting this on anywhere i sit on it all day because i don't need it and i don't want to need it mm -hmm. it's that safe the only contraindication is a pacemaker it won't hurt you but it could interfere with the pacemaker i've used it in hundreds of people my favorite case is a 60 year old man brought in a wheelchair he could not speak he could not stand with two people holding him by the elbows using it at home for a minimum two hours a day wow. one month later he walked into the clinic and could talk i'm a true believer in that and a two-year-old with epilepsy not controlled by drugs and hyperactivity he was a really, really, really in 20 minutes he fell asleep <laughs> wow so can you demonstrate to us how that's used and yes you, yeah please mm -hmm. head over to the melissa billy clark show on kp media tv and you can see exactly how this is used. For people who don't like it on the head and here the feet are getting 50 cent as strong as the head so it covers the whole body mm -hmm. however for instance this is for the brain and nervous system in general but wearing it over the heart it's phenomenal for heart disease it can bring blood pressure down from 200 over something to normal 128 and over 80 in 30 minutes. Similarly, for people with low oxygen, lung damage, it can raise oxygen saturation from 25% to 75% and within an hour to 90%. For local pain, got pain in your shoulder, but <laughs> you can put it over your leg lay it in your abdomen so it's a little bit stronger for local pain wherever you need it but it's the greatest thing in setting the nervous system back in order it looks uh promising and uh for our audio side it looks like a big halo and uh dr Sheely is putting it on top of his head he put it on his shoulders he put it on his heart um on his chest so it's, it's amazing. How did you come up with this? Well, all my inventions come from intuition. I spent three years from 1963 to 1966 studying the physiology of pain in animals, primarily cats. And I came up with transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation where you put electrodes about that big above and beside the pain or below the pain around the pain so to speak it is still used it it's excellent for people with more severe pain i put a sort of pacemaker over the spine cord still used all over the world and all of a sudden i was being sent 400 patients a year for this procedure but i wouldn't offer it to most of them i turned down 94 percent because they had had four or five operations and were on valium and percodan mm. and i didn't know how to get people off the drugs right so in october 1971 i stopped operating and i started working with chronic 
severe pain patients. I worked with him for a month with behavior modification. Keep him in busy 12 hours a day. Physical therapy, swimming in a exercise, uh, all kinds of things. And then I learned about autogenic training. Yes. Autogenic training was invented, first described in 1912 by a German psychiatrist. And I started using it with my patients, and it was so popular and so effective that I went back and got a PhD in neurology to understand self-control, self-regulation. And I came up with my first big book, 90 Days to Mm Self-Health, which sold 130,000 copies in those days. And now I have 68 different biogenics exercises. So it's, I, I suppose my favorite one is Thinking sets in motion spiritual forces to bring about change in body, mind, emotions, companions, despair. Every thought is a prayer. That's right. And just repeating those words over and over again can help remarkably. And you have a book, Conversations with G. It's a physician's encounter with heaven. So tell us who G is. Because it's he is an angelic guide. In 1984, in December 1984, I certainly heard a voice. What? what? He introduced himself, um, and he said he had been influencing me for a while, but he decided we needed to talk. And so many of my uh, inventions since then came from him. And so I describe how he has influenced my life and assisted me in further research in developing holism. And you've spoken to a lot of um, intuitive people and they have confirmed that you do uh, speak to, you know, the divine power. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. And I first actually... In 1972, I had my first past life experience, and it made sense to me immediately. I now know 30 of my past lives, and I help people with severe problems with a past life therapy session. And I have done, I think, six now exorcisms. The first one was a student. We had a, a whole 20 students, and eight of them was, ordered me to do a past life. And we voted and said, okay, Herman will be here. And I started to Herman, and suddenly I saw a demon in his face. And I said, wow, where did you come from? <laughs> and well, I, I had the demon go to hell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and since then, I've done uh, five or six more. In fact, I've got p- two pending now to help people get rid of demons. I love I love doing an exorcism. <laughs> so it helps them uh, as a physician. It's helping them as well to take out whatever is inside of them causing pain. Is that correct? Is that why you do these exactly. exorcisms? Mm-hmm. And it is... It's not only pain, but it's terrible distress in the mind. Because do we take those from different lives? I know that you believe in reincarnation, and I saw that, you know, we meet each other again in this life. So do we take our problems from our past lives to these lives, you think? Yes. Uh, I, I have one negative past life. I have no idea how or why I would do it. Mm -hmm. But I saw myself as a axe cutting the head for Rome (laughs) in the early centuries. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, this this can't be me. But several 
excellent intuitors. Yes, you did that. But all, all my others have been positive. So tell us about the past life therapy that you do with your patients. Well, um, I have them relax. And once they're relaxed, I have them go to a cloud in the sky and feel the floating in. And I said, in a moment, at the count of three, go back to the life you most need to visit to see what your problem is. One, two, three. And most people all of a sudden see themselves mostly as an adult the adult, but sometimes childhood. And um, most, of, most of the time, there's one traumatic life that they're back to resolve, so to speak. And it can make a big difference to discuss, especially the death in that life. And uh, the fact of uh, angelic guys that visit to a group of angels to describe what you did and why you did it and what you do to overcome it. Right. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you think now that we live in an era where spirituality is more accepted, do you have a lot of physicians coming to you and asking you, you know, Dr. Sheely, help me understand with what you do when it I comes to holistic medicine part well, of it? Back in the 70s, uh, I was seeing so many people that uh, in 78, I called a meeting of physicians interested in. I like to think of it as a boiling point because 212 physicians attended the founding of the American Holistic Medical Association. Interestingly, the establishment has does not like the name. They started calling it complimentary, complimentary and alternative. And then they called it integrative. And well, I can't tell you what I really think about integrative. It's, it's a sham. A local hospital claimed that they have a department of integrative medicine. They offered hot stone massage now, I'm not opposed to any kind of massage, including hot stone, but it's hardly holistic and comprehensive. Mm. Comprehensive means you look at body, mind, spirit, and soul. And the soul got kicked out of medicine 300 years ago. And basically, we are essentially an eternal spirit with a soul and this bowl incarnates for us to learn a lesson and hopefully most of the time we learn the lesson and move on right so your patients do they say to you um you know thank you so much for helping me uh when it comes to holistic matter because you know they don't want to take these medicines that really just kind of put a band-aid on things what's your thoughts yes and again I'm not opposed to drugs in acute illnesses. They can save your life. But every known drug, I have a journal here well, I, on my desk, and it has three pages of complications of the common drugs. And I, I refer to it frequently because Okay, you know, it it causes bleeding from the gut. It's a half a dozen drugs like that. It causes sedation, constipation, urinary retention, blurry vision, dry mouth, and weight gain. It causes a risk of increasing falls. Hypertension causes all kinds. The most common thing, hypertension drugs cause and the average person winds up with three antihypertensive drugs and only 45 percent have the blood pressure control taking true drugs a hundred percent of them sooner or later will have chronic fatigue and if the male problems with 
direction. I have weaned off hundreds of people from antihypertensive drugs safely and effectively. And as I, I so often say about this, it's better than all the psychologists, all the psychiatrists, all the mood drugs in the world combined. Mm -hmm. And they can get that over at your um, website, realholisticdoc.com. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And you also have oils on there too. Tell us about the oils. I'm a huge oil ah, believer. <laughs> I discovered back in the 90s, circuits in the body could stimulate with needles or electricity to raise DHEA, the anti-stress hormone, to raise oxytocin, the love nurturing hormone, to normalize the metabolism of water, to normalize the metabolism of the thyroid, and to reduce free radicals, a whopping 80%. And I did a study, well, oh, over 10 years ago, if you use the Bliss Fire, Fire Bliss, Earth Bliss, and Crystal Bliss, just three of them every day, takes 90 seconds a day to put the oils on, it restores the growth of the telomeres, the tips of your DNA, by 3.5% a year. It's amazing. It's amazing. Tell the audience how you got into holistic. I saw uh, I saw an interview where you were talking about a razor blade and that kind of <laughs> triggered everything off. And you're like, you know, there's got to be a better way than doing this. Please. Thank you so much. In my first year of neurosurgery residency, I was assisting the surgeon and I was shocked to see him take out a single edge razor blade break it in half, I, I, I assume it was, it was sterile, <laughs> and you open the spine, take a phone and take a ligament touching the spine and stick a razor blade and cut. I thought it was barbarian. Wow. And it had been in use since the twenties. And when I finished my residency, I spent three years studying the physiology of pain. And that's when I came up with spinal cord stimulation as well as a TENS device. And when I presented it at a group of neurosurgeons, they said, you're crazy, you, you just did it animals. Three years later, when I reported my first six patients with an implant of the pacemaker of the spinal cord, every neurosurgeon in the room wanted to do it. Wow. And it's still used all over the yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah, you, you marked yourself in this world among some, a lot of things, too. And I know that you talk about food. Food and intake is very important. Um, can you help us with that? Because, you know, people are busy. They're working. So what can they do to put in their body every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, to help them? Avoid fast okay. foods, especially. My favorite statement is that I went to McDonald's in 1962. Took one bite and I spit it out, and I've never been back. The average American eats 2.2 servings of vegetables a day. Yeah. You need a minimum of five, and preferably eight, one or two fruits and the rest, real vegetables. Avoid wheat, it's loaded with Roundup. Irish potatoes, sweet. White potatoes, mm -hmm. starch of all kinds, and sugar especially. Avoid it. I haven't brought it into the house in decades. I have a minimum of 20 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Wow. But I can't eat that many. But I, you, you can get concentrates, uh, O-R-A-C, o -R -A -C, mm -hmm. greens, for instance. A little scoop about that big contains six fruits and vegetables. So I get a lot of it in powder form and add that to my diet in addition to the real stuff. That's amazing. Are you a big fan of juicing? Yes. Mm. Fresh uh, fruits and vegetables? 
Oh, oh, oh. Any, any, anything you can juice, I like to do. My favorite is actually, actually apple juice. But I only drink one glass a day of apple juice. Nice. And you have, um, I see on your website also that you have these pills. They're super greens that you can take. Yes. And interestingly, the average person is deficient in vitamin D3, vitamin C, which I have in my youth formula, and vitamin B, B complex, especially for the brain. The cause of dementia, loss of brain function, Alzheimer's, for instance, is largely not getting enough B complex. Once upon a time, before so much pollution, we could get back with one or two milligrams of Bs. You now need to 25 milligrams of B1, B2, B4, and B6 for your brain to function well. Yeah, they mentioned that a lot during COVID. I remember uh, them saying, please, you know, double, <laughs> double up on your vitamin D and the complex. And um, there was another thing that they told you, probiotic. Oh, you yes. Probiotic. Probiotics. You know, there are more bacteria in your intestines than there are cells in your body. And these little buggers need to be fed probiotics. <laughs> Now, plain Greek yogurt is fine. Mm. My lunch will consume of 10 grams of protein and probiotics in a drink. Right. And uh, it keeps your digestive system working. Thank you so much for all this information. Tell us, how did holistic medicine help you in this lifetime? What has it done for you, Dr. Sheely? Well, interestingly, I had back surgery for five years ago. Mm -hmm. I needed it because a stupid dermatologist, the chief of dermatology at Duke University, when I was 18, I had shingles, a little patch of shingles that big. He treated it with x-ray therapy for 10 days. My spine was, looked a thousand years old. And if I had not this had surgery, I'd be totally paralyzed. He got rid of the back pain and stopped the spreading weakness, but it left me with the left foot numb. But I recovered for that. I was walking around fine. And December 4th of last year, I had a bunch of friends for dinner for my birthday. And I hugged one of the women who was well at the time, but she had had the COVID vaccine a month earlier. And three days after that, she had a heart attack. But she was well, and I made the mistake of hugging her. On the 9th of December, I awoke with a stroke. I could not speak. I couldn't have a word. And total paralysis of the left foot and leg. I have used my approaches to treat this devastation. I have to say that people who have had the vaccine may be more dangerous than vaccine itself because I wound up with a high spike protein, which you you only get if you get a disease. Interesting, my COVID for, was negative, but I had spike protein attacking my body as a well. whole. And without the holistic approach, I might have died. So did you have the vaccine? No, heavens no. But you felt it from her. I, yeah. It's, it's, it, you emit them in your breathing, uh, the, 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 the spike protein is horrible. Right. Wow. It's a lot of great information and you have so many books out there that people can and go and read. Um, do you have any books in the works right now? 
Well, I'm working on, uh, I, I, I think my latest is uh, reform common sense. Common sense is the problem of most people. If you're born healthy, you have the tips of your DNA called telomeres are a certain length. And they shrink in a healthy person 1% a year. So we're genetically ordained to live 100 years. Average American dies at 79 because of stupid habits. And so you have to eat the vegetables, as I mentioned before. I'm not a vegetarian. I eat lots of salmon. (laughs) It's my favorite protein. But I eat all kinds of fish and occasional beef and occasionally chicken and turkey, etc., and you have to exercise. Now, until December, I was exercising two hours a day. Wow. I'm down to 90 minutes a day now, <laughs> but I still do it. Sure. Only 10% of Americans get an hour a week of exercise. And sleep i'm a bug about sleep i have to i have to have eight occasionally i might get seven but people who get less than seven hours six hours or less cause more automobile accidents than all drug addicts and alcoholics combined right these are habits you can't get by without if you're so You know, the number one cause of premature death is obesity. 72% of people are over their ideal weight, and 36% of people are just plain fat. If I got two pounds overweight, I'd starve for a week. (laughs) Well, what do you think of what, how we live now? You know, everybody's supposed to be accepted for who they are, but that's kind of enabling people not working out and eating the McDonald's and yep. what's your thoughts? I, I call it stupid. That's part of the common sense. <laughs> the new book that's coming out about common right. sense. I like that. Well, I thank you so much uh, for everything that you've done to make a difference And uh, I look forward to reading your books. And if you want to head over to realholisticdoc.com, you'll find more about uh, Dr. Shealy. And um, he's an amazing man. So thank you so much, sir. Well, I enjoy, you know, everybody has a purpose in life. Yeah. And it's to help other people. And what you talk about all the time. So thank you so much for shining a great light here. And um, you're amazing. Melissa, Billy, I love talking to people like you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This episode is sponsored by Preferred Health Magazine. Hi, I'm Angelina Cappiello, publisher and editor-in-chief of Preferred Health Magazine. PHM hosts interviews with today's top physicians, experts in the healthcare industry, and some of today's most beloved celebrities. So head on over to www.preferredhealthmagazine.com today to receive your free digital subscription. And be sure to catch me on our new podcast, Talking Points with Preferred Health Magazine, streaming now on Spotify and YouTube. Thank you for tuning in to Making a Difference. I'm your host, Melissa Billy Clark. If you'd like to learn more about our show, please visit our website at melissabillyclarkshow.com. If you'd like to sponsor or be a guest, email melissa at melissaclarkshow.com. Let's make a difference together.